what is it about stencil art that you are drawn to? Um, I work with silk screen. I fell in love with the technique. I studied printmaking at university and in my second year of uni I did an elective subject um, in silk screen and I really loved the process, photographic silk screen in particular. I can't say my skills are as strong in, in cutting out those fine stencils and certainly when I see other artists do it I'm nowhere near as good as them but I love the photographic um, technique. I love the it's, it's a love-hate relationship, right? It's, I love the technical process and it's, I think it's a very printmaker thing. I love the technical process and uh, maybe it's, there's a bit of adrenaline when you are printing because you never know if it works till that last layer comes on board and, um, and then once that last layer it'll either work or it won't and then when it doesn't you have to go all the way back to the beginning and adjust every little step. You have to problem shoot and then work out where the problem is um, to get what you want. So I, I love it when it works. When it works, it is magic. When it doesn't, it's incredibly frustrating, but it's guess like a good puzzle. You stick with it to get what you want. Through your social media, you have labelled yourself as an artist and printmaker. Could you elaborate on this a bit more? Um, I guess I put artist and printmaker because I often will make paintings and drawings in addition. Um, I tend to always go back to printmaking, that's been my passion and I think I discovered that passion when I was about 18 years of age. It was the medium that just clicked with me and I just fell in love um, with an etching, make the etching process. So when I'm making my art I find I'm always I might start with drawing, I might every now and again go into drawing and painting, but I always end up coming back to printmaking and that's where I, I think I'm most comfortable and I, that's also where I probably have my, my most successful artworks as well. So I think with all artistic practice it's never defined as one type of art um, and I, I guess I put both there because I mostly do printmaking, however as an artist I'd like to leave that avenue open because I don't know, in five or ten years from now, exactly where I'll be going with my artwork. Um, Vivian, perhaps could you explain a bit more about like the, the nature of the laboured and multi-layered process of, of printmaking and stencil? Because I think when a lot of visitors come to the Chehurstville and they look at the exhibition, they might say, oh wow, that's a really cool image, that must be a photograph. Yep they don't understand mm. process. Yeah. Could you elaborate a little bit I on I think when you see the stencil art prize, you see the, the breadth of that stenciling process. So what I do working in silk screen is quite different to what some of the artists do working with spray paint. So often, um, certainly with those spray painted works, often there's that the design. So they start with a photograph or an illustration that they're working with and then they have to break it down into to, um, each layer being a separate colour so you have to you, you've got your image and then you work in a back to front process so you then I imagine many of those artists would be working from a, a, a light to dark so then your your lightest colours in the back covered with your darker colours on top potentially they could also go the other way um, whereas I'm working with um, silk screens so mine's rather in four layers. You can in silk screen get as many layers as you want depending on your, your image. So for me it's more about the registration and it, getting it as exact as possible which is very hard when you're doing it by hand. Again it's that love and hate. Um, it's the challenge I think. Um, yes yeah, so it's when those layers come together that often the colours mix. So you've got your you know, the yellow and magenta will make the red and depending which order you put your colours in, you get your browns or your greys uh, or your purples and the different colours come through that. So for me, there's a randomness to it, whereas some of the other artists working with that, the hand cut, cut stencils, it'll be probably far more precise and they can see it working as they do each layer. So can you tell us a bit about your selected work Woman of Cabane, currently on display at Hurstville Museum and Gallery as a finalist in the Stencil Art Prize. Yeah, uh, that 
The series started in 2015. Uh, at the time, there was the horrific, well, the events are still continuing, unfortunately, but the, the war in Syria, particularly ISIS, um, invading Syria and some of the horrific you know, events of that time. But um, out of this tragedy uh, is a real beacon of light, and that is the, the resistance from the, the Kurdish community that live in northern Syria. And there was a particular town called Kobani, and it was defended largely by women, militia, ordinary women, um, who put their hand up to defend their, their communities. Um, and they actually defeated ISIS. So these women are extraordinary. I, I believe they're, they're quite extraordinary activists. Often they're doctors, they're mothers, they're, you know, um, young women. Um, and they've actually led a, a feminist revolution in this area. Uh, so a lot of these, after their victories throughout northern Syria, they set up um, councils, democratic councils, which were secular. So regardless of religion, people were allowed to participate in these communities. So I just thought, and the struggle is still continuing. You know, we know the events there where these communities are continuing to be persecuted by various governments and forces. Um, but it's an example of people power. It's an example of, I think, of, of extraordinary heroism. Uh, so I was really moved by that and I worked with the uh, Kurdish community um, here in, in Western Sydney. They're largely uh, based in Blacktown and they were calling out to the world um, about their, their struggle and, and what they're up against. So yeah, I made contact with them and have been working with them, so sourcing a lot of the images. Uh, I'm not prepared to go over there and take them myself. Uh, but sourcing a lot of the images from the, the Kurdish community via their, their networks in, in, in northern Syria um, and, and Greater Kurdistan. So I thought it was an important issue uh, to, to get out there and highlight the plight and that, yes, we have these extraordinarily oppressive forces, but we can also have, in the same area, extraordinarily progressive forces at the same time. I think that's just yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, and um, interestingly, with this this movement, I mean, it's a broader. It's about you know, I guess, ethnic re recognition and autonomy, and uh, political recognition. But within all their structures, there's a requirement of fifty percent women participation. So at every level of of their government and organisational structures, so women are strongly represented and their voice is heard, which I think is far better than many of our Western democracies. So. so this is not the first time you've been selected as a finalist in the Stencil Art Prize. Back in 2017, you also had a work from this same body of work. Would you like to elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, um, I was selected previously for the Stencil Art Prize, so it's a great honour to be a finalist again. Um, and that you know, body of work continued for, for several years, so it's just uh, different artworks within that, that series of artworks that I did. So same topic, uh, different women, uh, different, different heroines uh, within that struggle uh, represented. So, that yeah. shows testament to the theme mm. and the strength and the power that your stencil conveys. Yeah, thank you. Mm. You're a full-time high school art teacher. How do you make time to create your <laughs> own art? Is this a struggle? And do your students see you as an artist in your own right? That's a really good question. Um, I work full-time and I'm an art teacher and head of a creative performing arts faculty, so there's a lot of work. Um, I'm now my 16th year of, of teaching. Um, it's been tough. I certainly, when I started teaching, I was still engaging in my art making practice, but it stopped for a long time, as happens to many art teachers because of the demands of the job. I believe, well, I would work, I'd say, between 50, 60 hours a week, 
um, teaching and I think that's a very common experience and I know people say we've got holidays but we work through those holidays. Um, so it's, it's very difficult. In 2015 I felt my mental health deteriorating through the stress of the, the work and I said to my husband at the time, well my, she's still my husband, I said at my husband um, that I need to do art. I need to get back in there. I'm starting to go a bit crazy. I need something to get this all out of my head. Yeah, you need some creative space. Absolutely. So I noticed the massive difference it made getting back into the studio. So I just found a studio space um, down the road in, in St. Peter's and moved in and ju we just set a time. So it was every Thursday. Every Thursday I'd finish work and I'd go into the studio for as long as I needed and just having that solid time just meant I could get dump everything out of my head, all the ideas, everything swimming around, I could get on that and just the, you know, as you might know, um, the, the meditative qualities um, of that process of making art really has enormous mental health benefits. So yeah, I've been doing it since. I did have to stop for a period. My husband became critically ill. So in 2017, I had to stop my art. Um, he was in hospital for 10 months um, and left with a physical disability as a result. Um, so, you know, there's been a few gaps. Um, however, nonetheless, um, start of last year, I got back into this studio space. So I've been here for a year, a bit over a year now, and getting back into to my art making. But um, I guess the second part, had a student see me. <laughs> There's a often they'll ask, Miss, are you a real artist or just a teacher? No. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll say no, I'm I'm an artist, I make my own artwork. Um, often they'll ask to see it and if I get the chance I I will put up an image or two and um, yeah, so it's great to share that with Yeah, it's sort of a bit awkward. You know, because you sort of go, This is my personal, this is teacher me, this is personal me, I don't want to blur those lines and I don't want kids necessarily searching me up, um, but I have at times shown students my work and um, yeah, so often I think if there's year seven class I had last year that would go, oh miss, you know, she's a real artist, have you seen her work, oh she's got really good work and, and they'll chat amongst themselves, so that's always, always nice when they see me in that way as well. I've looked at your Facebook page. <laughs> And personally, I've been impressed by the number of exhibitions and prizes that you've taken part in, um, several of which include the National Teacher Artist Prize. Um, you've exhibited with the Liverpool Arts Society, Blacktown, Campbelltown Arts Centre, with the Fisher's Ghost, and your association with the Southern Island Printmakers. How important is it for you to be a part of prizes and group exhibitions such as these for your artistic practice? Yeah, it's... I guess it keeps me working, there's something to work towards so I know if there's a deadline uh, approaching or often I'll make my work and then look at what events are taking place in the year, throughout the year, um, so it's good in that regards otherwise I feel my productivity slows down if I'm not working towards something. Um, so so, you can almost compare that to you giving your students an assessment. <laughs> it is a bit. Yes, it's quite, <laughs> it's quite true. You've got this assessment coming out and yeah. you have a deadline and you've got something to work towards. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Maybe it's the teacher side of me taking yeah, over. Um, yeah, true. Uh, so it keeps me, keeps my work, uh, my productivity rate fairly consistent throughout the year. Um, so that's helpful and um, I guess it continues to build my, my profile. I have been working towards solo exhibitions, however COVID threw my plans out, so I think they're on hold probably for another year or so till we see what happens and we return to normal or some new normal. Um, so I think it's, it's a bit of hold off on that. And it's also just the expense of solo exhibitions. They can be very expensive and you know, it costs a lot of money to, to make my art and when you look at gallery fees and commission rates and all of that, it can be, sometimes I get a bit of bit overwhelmed by the finances and go, okay, not ready for it, but it is a goal and I will be working towards that in, in due course. <laughs>